Product stewardship and extended producer responsibility is a key part of the global principles for zero waste communities. And the basic message is that businesses should take back their products and packaging at no cost to the public. Um, communities may not be able to do a lot about this at the local level, uh, but many communities have done uh, things like bans of uh, product sales, like mercury thermometers, bans of materials being put in the collection system or the disposal facilities that they may control or influence. And uh, that's something that local governments can do in the realm of product stewardship. Uh, currently, plastic bags and bands of styrofoam takeout containers are some of the uh, biggest things that uh, communities are looking at for banning. Um, but as you uh, listen to this, there may be some new current uh, issues uh, that local governments can do. Um, but it, in, in addition, advocating for state and national policies is really important. And uh, advocating at the state level is enhanced by participating in organizations like state product stewardship councils. Uh, there are many around the country, and those have become key tools for uh, uh, advocating for local government concerns uh, and needs for uh, EPR policies to be adopted at the state level. Incentives for redesigning products are really important. Um, they were one of the main reasons for pursuing EPR. Uh, they have not been uh, a key part of what most EPR bills have adopted and implemented, uh, so we need to re emphasize the need for any legislation to have incentives in there for redesigning products to be less toxic and easier to reuse, recycle, or compost. And of course, we don't want to expect export harm and send problems to other countries, and we expect that any EPR system will require uh, the businesses as a condition of being uh, implemented that they properly reuse, recycle, or compost and don't burn or bury uh, the materials that they collect. Ideally, it will support small local businesses and nonprofits rather than multinationals working out deals at the national level and eliminating uh, the entrepreneurial spirit that has led to major successes in recycling and reuse and composting all over the country. Some other pieces of zero, uh, particularly uh, programmatic, uh, are in the recycling realm, making recycling as convenient as trash, um, having as many materials as possible and available uh, to all generators. Um, many zero waste communities now um, either provide the service to everyone at once or require contractors to provide the service to everyone at once. Um, so that people don't have to subscribe for uh, recycling services. That's what that's referring to. In the organics realm, um, yard trimmings has been state of the art for the past 10 years, uh, collection from residents, um, either year round or uh, during the times when they are generated in the more northerly climates. Uh, but adding food scraps to those programs and compostable paper is the state-of-the-art issue that everyone is working uh, to incorporate. Uh, C&D, construction demolition diversion, uh, is being uh, pursued in a variety of ways. Uh, many places are finding just adopting an ordinance requiring anyone who's constructing or demolishing buildings or remodeling uh, of a major uh, nature uh, to achieve a certain diversion level as a condition of them getting their uh, permit from the cities. Uh, other types of zero waste policies, new rules include uh, bans of products like we talked about, uh, mandatory or universal recycling ordinances like they have in Austin, uh, EPR we talked about earlier. Um, and a key piece of zero is recognizing that this is requiring a behavioral change, a cultural change. Uh, so outreach and technical assistance is critical to both residents and businesses to get their buy-in, understanding, and support for how to participate in local reuse, recycling, and composting programs. And then building the infrastructure, um, uh, particularly uh, working more with reuse businesses that communities have not historically worked with to foster those. They're really important to getting to zero waste and developing the new idea of resource recovery parks. 
Um, resource recovery parks are an opportunity to bring uh, reuse, recycling, and composting uh, together, um, and uh, um, working in the resource recovery parks. Um, you see in this slide a diagram from a project in the UK where on the left residential and commercial um, vehicles bring in the 12 market categories of materials and then drop off uh, those in uh, designated areas at the resource recovery park for reuse, recycling, composting, soil production, and ceramics, which is again the, the rocks, the concrete, asphalt, things of that nature. An educational center in the uh, uh, middle of it, and a scale house somewhere about a third down the, uh, uh, the circle uh, is typically needed to charge for those services that require a fee to cover their costs whereas the uh, uh, reuse and recycling areas may be a free drop-off or even a buyback for recyclable materials. Uh, part of the design and concept of a resource recovery park is uh, uh, separating residential commercial traffic uh, coming in from the large commercial trucks uh, picking up uh, materials going out on the outskirts of the resource recovery park, and then all of the materials collected processed and sorted at the facility, uh, feeding into a wide range of businesses uh, in the existing area, preferably, and getting the organics back to the soil to help local food movement and agriculture in the area. This is a sample resolution uh, developed by the Grassroots Recycling Network for communities to adopt uh, when you're asking for um, uh, a community to adopt zero waste as a goal. Uh, having a resolution like this is handy to provide to the cities uh, to ask them to adopt this type of a resolution, calling for the organization to adopt a goal and direct staff to return with a plan within six months to a year. There are many resources out there. There are many uh, communities that have moved forward with resource recovery uh, parks and zero waste uh, community plans. Austin has been a stellar example, both with the strategic plan adopted in 2008 and the resource recovery master plan, which has detailed analysis of the best available uh, programs and facilities and technologies around the country. Uh, There's a million dollar plus uh, study available free for your download at that uh, URL. Uh, the Grassroots Recycling Network is the uh, go-to place for zero waste information in America. And the Zero Waste International Alliance was set up to develop standards uh, for the industry, and that's at zwia.org. Uh, a new entry in the field uh, two years ago is the formation of the U.S. Zero Waste Business Council to help develop a certification program to certify uh, who is achieving the zero waste definition of the Zero Waste International Alliance. They've run two conferences that have PowerPoints at that uh, website and Earth Resource Foundation, who helped to found the Zero, U.S. Zero Waste Business Council, has five other conference uh, data uh, and PowerPoints at their uh, facility. And of course, Story of Stuff is a great uh, background piece for understanding sustainable resource management uh, in a layperson's perspective. Finally, if you're not for zero waste, we ask how much are you for, and when we do this in, uh, in uh, public, um, if I was there to present this, I would ask you, how much waste are you for? And I would expect the answer, zero. I'd ask that three times until I heard it loud and clear and everyone uh, uh, feels the energy in the room uh, because zero waste just makes so much sense. Thank you.